get this party started. I got some stuff for y'all today. Boom, I got some stuff for y'all today. I got some stuff for y'all today. What's going on, guys? I got some stuff for y'all today. All right, so, yeah, y'all see my hair looking crazy? I was not able to go to the barbershop. Um, I got some stuff. Two nine one seven three five two three eight to get your late payment deletion guide. Okay, cool. I got some stuff for you. I was just reading up on a case law, well, several case laws, and I am up to give you guys some sauce, all right. Let me get this over here. All right, cool. All right, so. All right. All right, cool. So I got some sauce for y'all, right? Um, I was reading over a case law, and I'm going to tell y'all. So remember when we spoke about inaccurate information reporting? Well, there's several case laws now that I'll be incorporating in, like, my, uh, my accuracy letters or my inquiry letters or the personal information letters. Like, it, it's a whole lot of stuff. So... I was reading some stuff just now. Um, it's about it's about a few case laws that I got. So let me send this code off, and then we're gonna jump right into it. So happy Saturday, happy Saturday. Um, yesterday I wasn't able to come on because I was traveling yesterday, and I was not able to connect. But today we're gonna get into it. So let's talk about accuracy of information and the fact that when when um, consumer reporting agencies or creditors cannot verify information they must delete it so there was a new update that happened um it happened um september 29 the law requires companies to delete um, disputed unverified information from consumer reports. Now, some of y'all send letters out. One, you don't get any response. Can I get a witness? You sent letters out. You never got a response back. Well, that information needs to be deleted. You send information out and it came back verified. How was it verified? What was done to verify the information? So I'm going to get in that right now. Um, we're going to do this for 57 minutes, then I am gone. Um, at the end, I am going to give you guys an opportunity to join the last challenge um, that I'm going to have for the year. So, you know what? Let me change this late payment to challenge. So, text challenge, C-H-A-L-L. -L. Let me change the um, let me change the thing. So, text challenge, C-H-A-L-L-E-N-G-E. To 917-993-5238 to get your challenge tickets. So I am doing the last challenge for the year, and we will be talking about this getting negative items deleted from your credit. So challenge tickets, T-I-C-K-E, -T -I tickets. Okay, cool. So I'm going to have y'all do that. Y'all can comment the word challenge or you can text the word challenge. All right. This will be the last challenge for the year. I am not doing any challenge in December. So this is the last opportunity y'all are going to have to join my challenge. So text the word challenge 
to 917-993-5238 to get your challenge tickets. All right. So on on this live, I'm going to I'm going to go over some case laws. Uh no, I'm still in the military for those of you that are wondering. I'm still in the military. So there's a few things we're going to do. So this is my last challenge for the year. I'm not doing a challenge in December. This is the last challenge. So for those of you that have not gotten on the challenge, y'all need to get on the challenge. So if you're on Instagram, comment the word challenge in the chat. Text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. If you're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, you y'all know what time it is. I need y'all to screenshot the screen or text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. So let's talk about what led me to this topic this week, right? I was doing some research on consumers not getting a response back from consumer reporting agencies. I was getting a ton of questions on the rain. I send out a dispute, but nothing happened. Okay, we're gonna address that. I send out a dispute, it came back verified. We're gonna address that. I send out a dispute to the creditor, the creditor didn't respond. I send out a dispute to the consumer reporting agencies, the consumer reporting agencies didn't respond. Nobody respond to me and it's past 30 days. What can I do? Well, today we're going to talk about it. Today we are going to talk about it. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about it. Can somebody drop the word talk about it in the chat? Because that's what we're going to do. We are going to talk about it today. All right. What should happen, right? When you dispute inaccurate or negative items, what should happen? Well, what should happen is uh, an investigation should happen. And if they cannot verify or validate the information, it must be deleted. But guess what? A lot of times when you send out these disputes, nobody responds. Crickets. Nobody responds. What happens after 30 days? That's the part y'all don't know. That's the part y'all don't know. And I'm going to give y'all some insights. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to share this live so if you're on Instagram and Facebook, if you're hearing the sound of my voice right now, can you please share this live with about five to 10 people? And then when you do, just drop the word challenge. So um, share this live with about five to 10 people. When you're done, just comment the word done, comment the word challenge. Let me know that you shared it because we're going to get into some stuff. All right. We are going to get into some stuff, but I need some more people on the live. Um, let's share this live. Just comment the word done. Share this with a friend. Share this with somebody that you know could benefit from this information. Thanks so much, Doreen. I was able to delete all my personal information right over the phone. Shout out to you, Kristen, for taking action. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to you. Hmm. All right, share this live, and we are about to get this party started. Let's get it started. Okay. So I got a document. Um, I won't be able to read the whole document. It's like 40 pages long. But I'm going to give you all some insights on what I'm going to be using on the challenge. So I'm going to be making a series of letters. I'm going to be making some inaccurate report letters. And everyone that gets an ultra ticket, that comes on the challenge, you're going to get these new letters that I'm going to make. So let me give you all some context, and then we're going to go into some discussion. Do you all want some context? Let me know. Y'all know where all of this came from, right? Y'all want some context? Let me see if you guys want some context, because I'm about to start reading, and I need you guys to listen. If you're driving, I need you to listen, and I want you guys to join me on the challenge. It's the last challenge for the year. It is my last challenge for this year. I'm going to give you all some context, all right? All right, so I was reading, I was on the CFPB website, and I was looking up um, what happens when 
companies don't delete disputed or unverified information and it led me to a blog now on this blog dated september 29th 2023 it says this credit reports are used to make decisions that affect everyday facet of people's lives credit reports compiled by the consumer reporting companies are used by lenders insurers employers landlords and others yet others yet these reports frequently contain errors by one estimate one in five american has an error on at least one of their credit report accordingly it is it is critical that people have a meaningful opportunity to correct inaccuracies on their reports that's why congress when it passed the fair credit reporting act required credit reporting companies and the companies that give them information to respond appropriately when notified of errors. Now, what this is saying, ladies and gentlemen, when you dispute items, they should not be silent. The consumer reporting agencies, as well as the corporations, the furnishers of information, the finance company, whoever you're disputing with, they're not supposed to be silent. The collection agencies, they're not supposed to be silent. By law, they are required by law. I'm not making this up. They are required by law to respond to you. I'm gonna say this again. They are required by law to respond to you, right? So as the federal government agency charged with implementing and administering the, um, the federal consumer financial laws, the CFPB is committed to ensuring the companies meet the obligations put on them by Congress in the law. So I am not here making this up. This is an obligation that was mandated by Congress on these institutions to respond to your dispute. So if you send in a dispute and they did not respond to the dispute, you can sue them for not responding to you. They are obligated by law to respond to your dispute. I'm not making this up. This is law. Now let's continue. For that reason, yesterday, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and when they say yesterday, remember now, we're in reference to September 9th, 2023, all right? So when they say yesterday, today would be September 30th. That's what they're saying. So let, let me just give you all some, excuse me, some context there, right? So for that reason, yesterday, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and the Federal Trade, and the Federal Trade Commission, which both enforced the Fair Credit Reporting Laws, filed an amicus brief in the u.s court of appeals for the second circuit court for the second circuit in saluki versus credit one bank to help ensure that companies that provide information to credit reporting companies comply with the law specifically they must tell credit reporting companies to remove information that they cannot verify after someone identifies the information as wrong. Guys, I wish I was making this stuff up. This stuff is law. Now, let's talk about it. Company's responsibility to remove unverifiable information. The FCRA provides multiple ways to dispute inaccurate information on credit reports. Commonly, People dispute the accuracy of information on their credit reports with a credit reporting company such as Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. In response, the credit reporting company often refers to, often refers the dispute to the company that provided the disputed information. When a person submits a dispute to a credit reporting company and it is passed along the company that originally provided the disputed information, the company is then required to conduct its own investigation into the disputed information. If a company that provided disputed information to a credit reporting agency is unable to determine whether the information is true or not, the law requires them to tell 
the credit reporting company, the information could not be verified. So the credit reporting company will stop reporting it. That's what's supposed to happen, but we know that's not what happened. We know when they don't verify the information, they either lie and say it was verified, or number two, they don't respond to you. We know this, even though the law says they must delete information that is unverifiable and that is inaccurate. We know this. All right. So... That's wrong. The CFPB and the FTC brief explain in the FCRA, Congress put express requirements on companies with respect to information that cannot be verified. Those requirements would be meaningless if companies could continue providing unverified information and telling credit reporting companies that they could continue sharing it. And that is what's being done right now. A lot of you are in situations with bad credit and having inaccurate information on your credit because you disputed the information. And because this company violated the law, they couldn't verify or validate any of the information. They did not respond to you and you didn't know what the next step was. You left it alone and you became a victim of bad credit, not because of your negligence, but the fact that these corporations and the law that was put in place to protect you, you don't know the law. And because they know that 95% of Americans do not know consumer law, they are able to not respond to you. So you let that 30 days went out and guess what? It did not get deleted. That's what happens. I get thousands of emails. This is what happens. I am telling you what I am seeing. So I went on to do some investigation. People, your disputes are not being investigated. 30 days has passed, 60 days has passed, no response, but yet the negative item is still on your credit. If I'm talking to somebody in the audience right now, let me see, that. put that's me, because y'all know it's true, I know it's true, we know what's happening, but guess what? We can fix it. And this is why I am doing my last challenge for the year. If you've ever sent out a dispute and that dispute got ignored, they did not verify the information, it did not come back as validated or verified, they ignored your response, you need to be on the challenge. Drop the word challenge in the chat. So if you're on Instagram, drop the word challenge in the chat or take a screenshot off the screen, or if you're on Facebook, Twitter, um, wherever you are, text the word challenge. Text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. Text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. I am having the last challenge for the year. I am not doing any more challenges until January. So for those of you that's not getting on this challenge, y'all are gonna be stuck with bad credit until next year. I am not doing any challenge in December. Um, this is going to, November is the last challenge for the year. All right, so let's talk about something else. Let's, let's, let's keep it going. So now, ensuring that companies meet their obligation. Consumer reporting companies and companies that provide information, data furnishers, to them have great power over consumers' lives. And we're committed to ensure that those companies meet their legal obligation. Legal, guys, they have a legal obligation to report accurate information. They have a legal obligation to make sure that your report is equitable to you. They have a legal obligation to ensure that every piece of information that is furnished on your consumer report is accurate. They have a legal obligation to that. So if you dispute an item and it is negative, it is not equitable to you. It is inaccurate. And they ignored your dispute. They did not respond. 
the information that is inaccurate is still there. You can sue them. Who? I hope I'm talking to somebody today. Mm. Right? So I'm having the last challenge of the year, guys. I'm telling y'all, if y'all miss this challenge, mm, y'all are going to be in a world of hurt. Now, let's go over to the case law that I was reading, right? So the case is 23-71, document 74, and this case was on October 2nd, 2023. So this is um, Kalia Suluki, S-U-L-U-K-I, Kalia Suluki versus Credit One Bank. That's the case law. Kalia Suluki versus Credit One Bank. This is going off of this case law, but there's also more stuff inside of this document. So let's let's get right into it. And let me show you, like I'll I'll be using this particular case law to build several letters about inaccuracy. I'll be using this this case law to build several letters about compliance. I'll be using this case law to build several letters that I am going to give only to the people that get the ultra ticket on the challenge. Only ultra people are going to be getting these premium letters. So let's get right into it right now. All right. Interest of Amici, A-M-I-C-I, Cure. C-U-R-I-A-E. Now, I'm not a French pronouncer or Latin pronounce. I don't know what this is. This looks like Amici Cure. So uh, that's what I'm going to call it. If somebody else got a, a, a better accent to pronounce it and um, insinuate or whatever y'all want to call it, call it. But I'm telling you, it's called interest of A-M-I-C-I C-U-R-I-A-E. Y'all will not talk nothing about my accent all right so let's get into it all right to ensure fair and accurate credit reporting the fair credit reporting act the fcra 15 usc 1681 imposes various requirements that consumer reporting companies or agencies and the companies that provide those agencies information about consumers known as furnishers must follow as relevant here under section 1681 S2B of the FCRA, when a consumer disputes the completeness or accuracy of information in her credit or his credit report with a consumer reporting agency, the agency forwards the dispute information to the furnisher. The furnisher must conduct an investigation to determine whether the disputed information can be verified and cease reporting any information that cannot be verified. So they must, in, they must, where is it? They must investigate, they must investigate to determine whether the disputed information can be verified and they must cease reporting any information that cannot be verified. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the CFPB, or Bureau, and the only Bureau is the CFPB. There is no other Bureau. The TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, they are not Bureaus. Please, please, beloved, please. TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, they are not Bureau. The only Bureau in credit is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau or the Bureau of Consumer Financial Protection. It is the only bureau. There is no other bureau in credit. And like you have some of these gurus online who call themselves credit gurus telling y'all that there are credit bureaus. There is no credit bureau. It does not exist. If you hear these people online, talking about credit bureaus, it doesn't exist. It is a lie. There is no credit bureau. So if y'all got y'all credit people right now, 
that's telling y'all that these are credit bureaus. I need you to share this live with them because I'm here for all the smoke. I wish somebody would come on this live and tell me that credit bureaus exist. I wish somebody would. You know what? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, jump on this live. If you think a credit bureau exists, jump on this live right now. Come on. I want all the smoke. Give it to me. If you think a credit bureau exists, jump on this live right now. Right? I want all the smoke. Come on, give it to me. All the smoke. For those of you out here talking about credit bureaus exist, give me all the smoke. Let's go. Let's go. Because if you're going to tell me a credit bureau exists, you must be able to prove it. I want all the smoke. Let's go. Crickets? All right, cool. Give me all the smoke. Now, let's get back to this case law. So exclusive rule, riding authority, and most previous, in most provisions of the FCRA, 15 U.S.C., 1681 SE, the Bureau interprets and along with various other federal and state regulators enforces the law's requirements. Um, section 1681 SA to C. Those requirements include the provisions in Section 1681 S to B that require furnishers to investigate disputes submitted by consumers to cease reporting any information that cannot be verified. The Federal Trade Commission has been charged by Congress with protecting consumers from deceptive and unfair trade practices. Now, as a part of that mission, the Commission has long played a key role in the implementation, enforcement, and interpretation of the FCRA. Violation of the FCRA constitute an, an unfair, deceptive act or practice in commerce in violation of Section 5A of the Federal Trade Commission Act, Section 1681 SA1, and the FCRA grants the Commission such procedural, investigative, and enforcement powers as though the applicable terms and conditions of the Federal Trade Commission Act were part of the FCRA. This case involves the scope of furnishers' duties under the provisions of the FCRA that allow consumers to dispute information on their credit reports that they believe is inaccurate or incomplete. Given their role in administering and enforcing the FCRA, Amiki have a substantial interest in clarifying the government, the governing legal standards. So here the district court granted summary judgment for the defendant credit one. Now listen this, listen this. I want you guys to listen this. So in this case law, right, um, Suki versus Credit One Bank, the district court. So like some of these district courts are so stupid, right? Like some of these district courts are so stupid that they are not reading the laws properly. Listen, listen what happened. So the district court granted summary judgment for the defendant Credit One. So Credit One got a, 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 um, a summary judgment holding that the plaintiff Kalea Sukili was unable to prove that the re that a reasonable investigation of her de credit dispute would have shown that information in her credit report was inaccurate. But let me ask you guys a question. The burden of proof. Who is the burden of proof on? Is the burden of proof on the consumer or is the burden of proof on the creditor or the consumer reporting agencies? Let me know what you guys think. The burden of proof. Who is the burden of proof on? Is it on the consumer or is the burden of proof on the consumer reporting agency or the creditor? Who is the burden of proof on? Somebody talk to me. Drop it in the chat. Let me see what you guys put. 
Who is the burden of proof on? Right? Consumer reporting agencies, creditor. Drop it in the chat. Let me see what's up. Creditor, creditor, CRA. Yep. Mm -hmm. CRA. Yep. Reporting agencies. Yep. Sylvia, I see that you're joining. Let me get through this and then I'm going to get you on the live. All right. Give me a minute. I'm going to get you on the live. The burden of proof is not on the consumer. The burden of proof is on the creditor. The burden of proof is on the consumer reporting agency, right? Do not, consumers, please, do not feel like you have to be the one to prove anything. I know I say all the time, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Yes, that part is true. But when we're talking about your reports, I'm talking about proving the fact that they were negligent, not supplying proof to validate or verify any account. That's not your job. Your job is not to provide them with nothing to validate or verify the account. That is not your job. Your job, the proof that you must get is the proof that they were negligent, that they were reporting inaccurate information, that you disputed said negative account or information inaccurate or incomplete information and they did not do their part that's the only proof you need because when you need to go to court and when you need to go to your lawsuit going you need to show this and the fact that you were damaged as a result but let's listen to what the story said there's more to it right there's more so remember the district court granted the summary judgment for the defendant, Credit One Bank, holding that the plaintiff, Kali, Kalia Sokili, was unable to prove that a reasonable investigation of her dispute, of her credit dispute, would have shown that information in her credit report was inaccurate. But, here we go, but furnishers are also required to remove disputed credit information when it is unverifiable. And the district court lost sight of this key principle. This is what the CFPB is saying. They gave Credit One, they gave Credit One a summary judgment, right? But they overlooked the fact, they overlooked the fact that the furnishers are required to remove disputed credit information when it is unverifiable and the district court lost sight of that key principle because the district court held Sukili to an improper burden because the burden of proof is not on the consumer the burden of proof is on the creditor the burden of proof is on the consumer reporting agency its ruling to the issue should be reversed they have to reverse that ruling. The burden of proof is not on the consumer. The burden of proof is on the, the creditor, the furnisher, the CRA, not the consumer. This judgment, this, this summary judgment that Credit One Bank got has to be reversed because the CFPB clearly states the burden of proof is not on the consumer. The burden of proof is on the corporation and the ruling of this issue should be reversed. Mm, that was, whoo. That's what I'm talking about, yeah? Mm. So do not let these corporations, do not, do not let these corporations trick you into having you send them anything. You do not have to send them any proof of nothing. On another note, you do not have to give them your social security card. You do not have to give them your social security number. Sylvia, what you got going on, Sylvia? Sylvia. Okay, I guess you were requesting by accident. Oh, it's not Sylvia, it's Karen. Karen. Karen, Karen, Karen. Okay. All right. 
All right, I guess we didn't get that person. Guys, if you're going to request to come on the live, please be present. Like, please be present if you're requesting to come on the live. Don't let me um, get you on the live and then, like, I'm seeing the ceiling or something like that. Like, no, don't do that. All right. Karen, I am not able to add you to the live. I don't know why. But it's saying you are unable to join the live. Don't know why, but this is what it is saying. You are unable to join the live. So I don't know why. So let's break it down now. The burden of proof is not on the consumer. The burden of proof is on the creditor who is reporting the inaccurate information to your credit. The burden of proof is on the CRA that is furnishing the information. So this case has been reversed. It must be reversed. It is said so in this document that it should be reversed. And this is coming straight from the CFPB. The burden of proof is not on the consumer. All right. Whew. Guys, the last challenge for the year. It's happening November 13th to 17th. If you guys are not on this challenge, I don't know what to say to you. Good luck going into the new year with your bad credit. For those of you that are serious to getting these negative items deleted, I will be making a series of letters from this case law using these case laws. Y'all need to drop the word challenge in the chat. So if you're on Instagram, Drop the word challenge in the chat or text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. Text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. Text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. This is the last challenge for the year everyone can't afford to do the challenge well there's general admission general admission is only 97 dollars. if y'all can't come up with 97 dollars to start fixing your credit man i just don't know what to say everybody got an iphone everybody you got every one of you got something over a hundred dollars and if 97 dollars is too much for you to learn how to repair your own credit honestly i don't know what to say i just don't I don't. It means to me your credit is not important for you to figure out how to get $97 to learn how to repair your own credit, then repair people's credit, then you get money for exchanging that service. It just means you don't want it enough and your credit don't mean enough to you. All right, we're going to dive into this because this case law is juicy. Right, let me dive into it some more. All right, so number one, right, L listen to this consumer reporting agency. So, Congress right now, Congress right now is addressing the consumer reporting agencies. Let's hear what they have to say to the consumer reporting agencies. C consumer credit reporting plays an important role in the lives of American consumers. The consumer credit reporting ecosystem includes, number one, consumer reporting agencies. Well, hold on. Consumer reporting agencies. Did Congress say credit bureau? Did Congress say credit bureau? Did Congress say credit bureau? Huh. Congress never said credit bureau. Credit bureaus don't exist. So I downloaded the case law you were reading. Seemed like she was a victim of identity theft. So even though I haven't seen that part, but let's say that this person was a victim of identity theft. Identity theft simply means that there is inaccurate information on your credit report that is not yours. So it's inaccurate if it's not yours. So if you disputed the accuracy of the report and you identified that this account came from an alleged identity theft 
and they still report the inaccurate information, it is still a violation of the law. So even if it's a case of identity theft and the account is not yours and the, you identified the account as an account from an alleged identity theft and they are still reporting the inaccurate information to your reports after you've disputed it or they did not respond to your dispute, it is still a violation. Right? So let's talk about, let's talk about furnishers. So let's, let's get to furnishers. So consumer reporting agencies, which compile reports on consumers and make them available to lenders, insurers, employers, landlords, and other users, and two furnishers, which provide information about um, consumers to consumer reporting agencies. So CCFPB annual report of credit and consumer reporting complaints, 5 January, 2022, FCRA report, generally CFPB, Key um, dimensions and process in the U.S. credit reporting system are right. consumer reporting agencies. Okay. So over 200 million Americans, more than 15,000 furnishers provide these companies information about consumers. So there's over 15,000 furnishers of information. Absolutely, Kiki. Consumer law is the ultimate goat. Listen to this. More than 15,000 furnishers provide these companies information about consumers. So there's about 334 million people in America. And we have over 15,000 companies that are either corporations, banks, institutions, firms, and other consumer reporting agencies providing information on you. Can you comprehend if you have 15,000 companies, 15,000 reporting information on you, how do you plan on disputing with all 15,000 companies? Please, somebody tell me, how do you plan on doing that? There are over 15,000 furnishers providing information. Do you see the magnitude of how unbalanced? So this is you, right? This is you. This is you right here in one hand. This is you. And there's 15,000 companies reporting that information. You're way up here. And there's 15,000 of them. 15,000. Can you grasp how much of a disadvantage you are at, like, can you grasp the difference in you, one person versus 15,000 companies reporting information on you? That's crazy. Now imagine people that don't know consumer law, right? Let's, let's, let's take for a minute, people that don't know consumer law and how much at a, 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 of a disadvantage they're at. They don't know how to protect themselves. They don't know how to properly dispute negative items. They do not know the things that they don't know. And because banks, car dealerships, different firms, and other institutions know that consumers do not read. They know consumers don't know the law. Every day, every day, your rights are being violated. Every day. And some of you don't even know it. There are inaccurate information on your consumer report. Inaccurate. There's one in every five consumer reports contain inaccuracies. And when you dispute these negative items, they don't respond to you. Is there anybody here 
that has sent out a dispute, just put me in the chat. If you sent out a dispute and they did not respond to you, drop it in the chat. Let me see. Is there anyone here where you sent out a dispute, right? You send out a dispute and the creditor or the consumer reporting agency did not respond to you. It's happened to me before, so I'm not scared to tell y'all it, 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 that it did. It, it happened to me. This is why I am so passionate about what I do. This is why I do what I do. I know what it's like to have bad credit. I have been denied for an apartment. I was denied, um, denied employment. I had to get a co-signer to get a 2007 Nissan Altima with 75,000 miles on it. I know what it's like living with bad credit for years. I did it. I was a victim of identity theft. I was a victim of subprime lending. I was a victim and I decided I will no longer be a victim to no one. That's when it happened. When I decided that I will never be a victim, you will not give me high interest rate because I know the state usury law. You cannot fool me. I'm in the military. If I'm active duty, I know the SCRA caps interest rate at 6%. I know that if I'm going to buy a car, I don't have to put a down payment. I know that there is no such thing as a late payment because the only way you can prove a late payment exists, you must send me notices and procedures from section 1637B and you must mail or deliver this 21 days before my payment due date. And if you cannot prove these things, you cannot prove that there is a such thing as a late payment. A late payment only exists under one circumstance and one circumstance only. 15 U.S.C. 1666B. That is the only section that grants any creditor any right to put a payment as late on your credit and they must do specific things before that can happen i decided i will no longer be a victim that's when everything changed for me that's when everything changed when i decided that i will no longer be a victim you're reading case laws where corporations have control of your life and some of you are going to say, well, Doreen, they don't. Well, yes, they do. They do have control over your life because they report information on your credit report. Your credit report speaks on your character, your general mode of living. It speaks, let me, let me, let me, let me break down what you're, because some of y'all still don't know what I'm talking about. 15 USC 1681. Let, let me tell y'all when people pull your credit, what they are seeing. When they pull your credit, right? When someone pulls your report, this report that these corporations have control of because you don't know consumer law. They have control over it because you don't know the things that you don't know. And because they know you don't know it, they can report what they want because there is no one to hold them accountable. See, when we talk about your credit, someone's evaluating your credit worthiness, your credit standing, your credit capacity, your character, your general reputation. Yes, they have control over your life because these are all the things that they have control of. So when you go and apply for an extension of credit, this is what they are seeing. What are they saying about the rain's credit worthiness? What are they saying about the rain's credit standing? What are they saying about the rain's credit capacity? What are they saying about the rain's character? What are they saying about the rain's 
general reputation. They have control over your life. Credit will determine where you live, your school zone, what you get approved for, the interest rate you get approved for, are you going to live an expensive life? Credit determines all factors of your life. So if you don't believe that your credit is important enough for you to figure out and get on my challenge and repair, rebuild, restore your own credit to put you in a position to have the power to purchase I don't know what to say, beloved. I don't. It is your credit. Own your truth. Own your truth. And when you own your truth, no one can ever use your truth against you. You have to own the fact that you got bad credit. It's what it is right now, Doreen. I got bad credit. I know it's okay. I have been there. Your current credit situation does not define your financial reality. Which level do we get to ask you questions? Um, get Ultra. Ultra Ticket gives you the ability to ask me questions on the challenge. Ultra Tickets, when you get your Ultra Ticket, you get the ability to ask me questions on the challenge. Guys, this is my last challenge for 2023. This is the last challenge for 2023. Last challenge. So for those of you that's not getting on the challenge, cool. I am telling you, this is my last challenge for 2023. I am giving out all the sauce on this challenge. This case law that we're reading, I'll be making new letters. And if you're not an ultra ticket member, you won't be able to get it. You, my university gets it and ultra. Get university or talk to lawyer. They won't remove anything. I'm telling y'all. Right? These are the things people are saying. Guys, I need you right now to get the challenge. Drop the word challenge, right? If you're on Instagram, comment the word challenge. I purchased the letter already. If I have an existing loan, does that hurt me disputing it? No, it does not. I'm going to give you all more insights on that too. You can delete open accounts from your credit. If there's late payments on there, you are able to delete those late payments as well. I'm telling y'all, you have so much power. Yo, you got so much power. You do. There's, there's so much power inside of you. And if you let a corporation that is paper control your life, I am telling you, sweets and sweetness, what's going on, sweet and sweetness? If you let a corporation take control over your life, a piece of paper taking control of your life, I need you to wake up. Touch your neighbor. And I want you to say, wake up. Because it is time. It is time you take your power back. You've been a victim for far too long. How much longer, beloved, are you going to be a victim? How much? Two more years? Three more years? Four more years? How long are you going to be sitting on the fence? Two more years, three more years, four more years. How long are you going to have those negative accounts on your credit? What, two more years? You're going to wait three more years? How long? What more must I say for you to say, now is the time for me to take action? When is the time to take action? Christmas is coming. You want to go on vacations. You want to get a new home. You want to get your finances in order. You want to get a promotion. 
you want to get the kids their new room you want to renovate the house it's time for a new car new year new me well when are you going to decide that you're going to take action are you going to wait until you need credit to go and fix your credit You got to stay ready so you don't got to get ready. You're going to wait until the opportunity comes and the opportunity is going to come by and say, well, hello, Doreen. Well, hello, opportunity. I'm here for you today. Well, damn, opportunity. I don't have my credit in order. Wait so I can fix my credit so I can take you. You know what? You never got ready for me. So I'm going to go to the next person that is ready for me. You cannot wait until it's raining to fix your house. Fix the house before it's raining so you don't have to deal with the leaks. You cannot wait until you need your credit. Doreen, I gotta buy a house in 30 days. Well, shit, I don't know what to tell you. I'm on this platform for years giving you all game. And if you decide 30 days before you need to buy a house, that is the time to fix your credit. Good luck. Good luck. That's all I'm going to say. You have the opportunity now. You have the opportunity now to get yourself in position. You Guys, we are deleting late. Late payments are being deleted in four hours. Four, y'all be playing with me. We are deleting. I've cracked the code to late payment. There is no one on the internet that can confidently say they cracked the code to late payment before I did. No one. I get late payments deleted in four hours, and I'm going to teach you how to get late payments deleted in four hours. There's nobody else. If they're not in my university, if they're not a student of mine, no one else knows how to get late payments deleted in four hours. None. No one else can say that. And if I'm lying, somebody come fact check me real quick because I got receipts for days. I wish somebody would try to come and fact check me. I got receipts for days. Bring that smoke. Because I ain't going to say nothing on here that I can't prove. And the fastest time we've gotten late payments deleted is four hours. So I wish somebody would say, oh, they're in your line. Yeah, all right, bet. Go to my Instagram. Go check my stories out. Go to my results. Ain't no capping over here, B. We got results for days. How many people suffer from late payment let me see the statistics on this listen to this many americans are feeling financially squeezed as the cost of living rises and having a thinner wallet can come with consequences when it's time to pay bills in fact 32 percent of americans have paid a bill late in the past six months. In the past six months, 32% of them, let's do the math. Shit, let's do the math. Let's do the math. There are 334 million people in America, right? Multiplied by point three two so there's 106 million people in the last six months there has been 106 million people that have late payments 106 million people right now within the last six months have late payment but wait it doesn't stop there listen to this and 61% of them say it's because they didn't have enough money to cover the cost. And some of y'all don't even know 
that these late payments, the 106 million people right now that is suffering from late payment don't even know those late payments shouldn't even be on their credit. Right now, we only got 29 people on, in, in, on Instagram. Let me see how much we got over YouTube and Facebook. We got 92 between YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and there's, so, so together, that's maybe what, 125 people. There's 125 people on here right now, and there's 106 million, 106 million people right now with late payments. They don't even know what I'm telling y'all. 106 million, and there's 100 and and 25 of you on here america has 334 million people and there is 106 million people with late payments right now and they don't know what i'm telling you right now imagine that imagine that and i'm telling y'all the last challenge for the year I am not doing another challenge for the year. You have an opportunity right now not to be in that statistic. And you're going to tell me that y'all want to keep bad credit? No. No, 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 no. We ain't keeping no bad credit around here. New year, new me. Abundance opportunities, access, opportunity, abundance, access, information. All of these things are yours, but faith without works is that some of y'all got so much faith, so much faith that you forgot the works part. You cannot have faith without works. Faith plus work equal success. How are you finna have faith and leave out the work part? Faith without works is hope. You're hoping for something, keep hoping. No, general admission will not give you access to the letters. The new letters that I am making, only Ultra will get those. Ultra and the university. You delete late payments in four hours. How is that? It's over the phone. Yes, Breezy, I got a script that you use over the phone, and I got letters that you mail in. I'll be going over that on my challenge. I'll be giving out the late payment script on the challenge. I'll be walking you guys through how you use the late payment script to delete your late payments in four hours. I'll be walking you guys through that. That's what I'll be doing on day one of the challenge. Right? So what does this mean? Am I going to sit idly and let these corporations run my life? Am I going to sit? Like Congress here said it. It is written right here. These agencies... The reports compiled by consumer reporting agencies are used to make decisions that affect every facet of consumer's life. I didn't make that up. It's written in this case law. How do I get on the challenge? Drop the word challenge, guys. If you're on Instagram, drop the word challenge in the chat. Just comment the word challenge. If you're on Instagram, if you're on Instagram, comment the word challenge if you're on instagram comment the word challenge if you are on youtube if you're on twitch if you're on facebook if you're on yeah if you're there all i need you to do is text the word challenge Text the word challenge, C-H-A-L-L-E-N-G-E. -L -L -E -E. Text the word challenge to 
993-5238 to get your challenge tickets. It's the last challenge of the year. I am going ham on this challenge. I am going to go ham on it. Like, I'm going to go so hard on this challenge. Y'all are going to think I am the CEO of Viagra. That's how hard I'm going to go on this challenge. Like, I am going to go so hard on this challenge. Y'all going to think like, yo, the rain must got shares in Viagra and Cialis. Yeah, I'm going to go that hard. I'm going to go that hard on this challenge. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to go crazy. And <laughs> Yo, let me drink some water. Y'all are crazy. Get your minds out of the gutter. You crazy asses. Get your minds out of the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um when is charge off charge off is normally on day four i believe i covered charge off on day four <laughs> charge off is probably on day four i don't remember the schedule off the top of my head but i know late payments and inquiries are day one and then i move into collections then I move into student loans. So it's it's a few things, right? We're, it's the last challenge for the year. It is the last challenge for the year, guys. If you want to sit idly, it's cool. It is cool. But I'm letting y'all know. Let me see if I can get somebody on the live. Boom, boom, boom. Because I got to go in 10 minutes. All right, we got a winner. Sani, please tell me you can hear me. Can you hear me? Oh, man, what's going on? Sani, you're on the live. All right, I guess. Guys, how's my audio? Can you hear me? Because it's the second person that came on the live, but I'm not hearing any audio. Can you guys hear me? Kiki, you want to join me on the live? Come on, Kiki. Kiki, I want to talk to you. Kiki, join me Join me on the live, Kiki. Let's go. Come on, Kiki. Join me on the live. I need somebody to join me on the live. Guys, don't tell me you guys are shy. I'm, 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 like, I'm one of the nicest person you ever met. Can somebody join me on the live? Nobody want to talk to me today? Like, what's going on? Guys, this is the last dispute challenge. The last dispute challenge. And if y'all don't want to join me on this challenge, I'm telling y'all, y'all are going to be missing out. Motivation 80. Come on the live. Come talk to me. Let me see what you got. Motivation 80. Talk to me. Somebody talk to me. I don't know why y'all don't want to talk to me today. What's going on? Can I join for a question? Absolutely. Absolutely. We got Britt in the house. Britt, you are live. What's up, what's up, what's up? Hi, Jerry. Thanks for all that you teach. I, I won't keep you long as I know you're busy. But I wanted to know this. If I had a debt that was like 9K, right, mm -hmm. and they got a quick default on it, I wasn't properly served, I tried to vacate it, they didn't listen. They mm -hmm. sold it to a debt collector who okay. wants 15K now. So someone told me if the company charged it off, I can claim it on the tax return. That is correct. Income. That is correct. Heard you say that, but I only trust you, not the only person. So that is correct. correct. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Does that mean if that was charged off in 2020, I have to amend the 2020 tax return? So you would speak. So when it comes to taxes, I cannot say, like, I'm not an, a CPA. But what right, I right. would say and would recommend is that you get with a CPA, right? And the year the action was taken when it was charged off, that's the year you would file it on the taxes. So you might have to amend. If it was, la let's say they charged it off last year, it would get amended to last year's taxes. Okay. And then what if they got a default, the debt collector? Then no, we money? can show proof. We can go back. We can, re we can reopen the case. We can go back and show that this is what the IRS says. And okay. they got a default 
on a charge of debt, a debt that is uncollectible, a debt that was canceled, that they got a tax break on. So we're talking about no unrich adjustment. Okay. okay. Right? We're talking about yeah. that. And guess what you have? You have the CPA or the tax professional as a witness that this was filed as income. You cannot, you cannot file taxes on debt. You cannot file taxes on debt. Taxes are only filed on income, whether it's passive income, earned income, capital gains, income, not debt. Okay, so I know the amount, Duraine, but when I went to the original creditor and told them to give me the 1099C, mm. they told me, oh, we didn't charge it off, but the debt collector said they did charge it off. But guess what? The IRS also says that even without the form 1099C, you can still charge it. You yep. You can still put it on your taxes as income. Well, they gonna learn today. They finna learn today. But guess what? What type of debt was it? Was it like a personal loan? Yes, it was a small business loan. But this is the catch. It was from a nonprofit, and I looked at my contract, and they had an arbitration. I believe that they were supposed to follow before. Yes, they that's the perfect. So you're, you're 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 following. Okay, good. I like this conversation. I like this conversation. So now, was there a finance charge involved? The contract itself, there should have been a finance charge, right? Yes. In the finance charge, there's also an insurance policy built in 15 USC 1605 that protects the lender or the creditor in the event that the obligor, in this case, you defaulted. So they got insurance money. They got fully paid and they did it as a charge off and they sold it as a debt to debt collectors. Mm -hmm. The debt yeah, is not debt. yours. You have gross or ordinary income from that that you need to file and pay the taxes on. Yeah, I'm just not sure what year it was. I don't know if it was the end of 2020 or the beginning of 21, and they won't tell me anything. So, so that's why I didn't know what tax to return. So, so this is where now, when was it listed? Is it listed on your consumer report as a charge off? No, the debt collector bought it, and now they're listing it as a debt. So when was it listed? Uh, last year. Okay, so the next question now becomes, when did the account went into default? Uh, I defaulted in 2020. Before the default, I had asked them if they could do, like, a modification. Hold on, baby girl. I got something for you. The first thing we're going to look up is, you said it was a what type of loan? Uh, small business one. Small business. Did you agree to use your social security as a personal guarantor for that loan? Yeah, I believe so. So now this puts it in FCRA and FDCPA jurisdiction, right? Because anything yes. business-wise doesn't get reported on your personal unless you PG it. Well, now regular consumer law applies to it. So now statute of limitations, statute of limitation on collecting C O L L E C T I N G loan debt in what state are you in? California. And in the LA County. In in California. Let's see. Yeah. So the statute of limitations on debt in California is four years, right? I thought it was seven. That's why I was kind of. Uh -uh, it's four years. And you said okay. it was when? 2020? Yes. What month? I think it was November or December. So what? I have like one more year to wait. So in. you're three years in. Nope. There's more to it. There's more to it. See. 15 USC 1692 governs how debt gets reported, right? Have you right. disputed this debt before? They snuck in a default on me like super quick. I wasn't served. And so I due the process wasn't through. done. So now we're talking about the known parking rule. Did they get in touch with you before that alleged debt was parked on your reports? No, they just went all in. So Same that's thing. a violation of the new FDCPA law. It speaks right. about the known parking rule. That's number one. Number two now, you can send in a a cease and desist 
or a validation of debt? Do you well, have I want the package for that? I bought the package of the letters and I asked them to validate the debt. Mm -hmm. When did they buy it? All that stuff. They ignored me and just told me we can put you on a payment plan or one lump sum, but they didn't answer any of my well, questions. Well, that's not how it works. So that's a yeah, violation right there. So do you yeah. what did you send it out certified mail? Um green return I receipt? I did. Okay. So now did they respond within 30 days? Uh they did. They just responded though with pay it. But they didn't respond with what the validation the notice asked for. Okay. See, when we talk about a validation notice, there's only three well, a validation notice has a specific response mm -hmm. now what i want you to send to them is my which one of the letter packs do you have do you have I the know. i got it from the millionaire mindset that's how i found you like, all right i'm trying i'm it. trying to remember so you need the you need the debt valid Ooh, you better be on my challenge girl you better be on the challenge <laughs> there's a letter it's called okay it's on my website it is called notice for validation of debt Okay. person 12 cfr 1006 but okay. the one that i want you to send out is the no parking rule because that one is going to kick them straight in the throat because they parked an illegal debt on your reports before they could verify or validate the information it is against the law they cannot do it okay the reason okay. why they get away with such things is because a lot of consumers don't know the things that they don't know. Right, right. So Ignorance what? Is a trillion dollar industry. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. It is huge. Yeah. So make okay. sure you get your challenge ticket. I'm gonna be breaking down this a lot more for the challenge. Okay. Uh, you're you're gonna be blown away and get okay. ultra ticket. And I know okay. some people are gonna say, Doreen, it's like seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, because what you're learning, you can't unlearn. But what you will right. learn will last you for the rest of your life. Thanks, Doreen. I always read anyways. And that was one thing I like that you said on the Millionaire uh, Mindset podcast, how you were saying a lot of the information, people feel like they hide it from us. But if you really just take the time to mm -hmm. read it, mm -hmm. ask the necessary questions, mm -hmm. they know that our people group, they think we're ignorant, but they keep the information from us because yep. they know how powerful we are. My and people so, are destroyed because of a lack, lack of, of knowledge. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? Even when we give them knowledge, they're rejected. Unfortunately, but I'm going to go hard and just apply pressure. Do it. You yeah. own You own the information being reported. You control right. what gets reported. It's not the other way around. And at times, they spin the role on us. And we feel like we are helpless. We feel that, right. yo, these corporations, these huge mega corporations, can report whatever no they can we have case laws we have laws and you mentioned something about them exaggerating the amount of the debt oh my gosh yes that's illegal they cannot do that they said it was attorney's fees court fees bullshit get a hold of bullshit all of it is bullshit what? it's total bullshit so should I do a motion to vacate because they didn't follow the arbitration agreement? Well, like, you, you can go that route. You have to pick the route you want to go, but you need to right. line up your arsenal. So you, you got to put all your eggs. You got to um not put all your eggs in one basket. You got to lay your hard. eggs out. Correct. Yeah. What was the first thing that was done? That was a violation. What was the second thing? That was okay. a violation, right? So okay. the first thing would be the company, there's an arbitration clause. We didn't go to arbitration. They sold the debt to a debt collector. We did not dispute its accuracy. You violated your own terms and agreement. That's number one. Number two, it is a charge off. And as a charge off, a charge off is a canceled debt. You cannot collect on a canceled debt. Furthermore, you cannot sell a canceled debt. That's on rich adjustment, right? The next thing is, you illegally now park a debt on my consumer report. Mm -hmm. That is a violation of the no parking rule. Okay. I sent out a validation of debt. You did not validate it yet. You provided information that was irrelevant to the nature of the dispute. Right. So no, this I is how you're understand. stacking. You're stacking them up. Come on, I girl. Have a friend that follows 
follows you, Doreen. Everything you're saying is 100. And I went to court with her like two weeks ago, and she brought up all these things. Like she had a default, and she was trying to now sue the debt collector for not following. Mm -hmm. Do you know that some of these judges are crooked? The judge oh, of had course. told her, yeah, the judge told her, I'm not your accountant. You're in the wrong court and dismissed it. And my friend didn't even get a chance to talk. And I'm like, in those cases, like, what do you do? Well, you get a lawyer and you go back. You go back, move them to a, move them to a federal court, oh, move yeah, them yeah, into yeah. federal jurisdiction yeah. because we're talking federal laws here. Okay, okay. So if it was done at, at a county or a state level court, move it to federal. Move it to federal, because these okay. these guys down here they're stupid anyway. Because I was just reading this case law and the CFPB spoke about they have to reverse the judgment because they didn't take into consideration that the consumer reporting agency and the furnisher have the, 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 the proof is on them and they flipped right. it to the proof or the burden of the proof being on the consumer. And then they gave them a summary judgment and the CFPB reversed it. The burden of proof yeah. is not on you. The burden of proof is on them. Okay, sounds good. Ooh. And then one last thing, what happens when you ask them to delete a late payment and then they go, oh no, this is this is accurate. And you're well, like, well, that's, that's, that's not how it works. I, I know it doesn't. And I bought your letter and I sent it to them. Do you, do you have the new one? Accurate. Do you have the new one? Because the new late payment letter, okay. it is fire. Four hours. There's a script. For the shortest time we've gotten late payments deleted is in four hours. It's okay. It's bananas. Okay, I'll go on there and get it. Yep, I got 10 minutes. I got to go get out of here. Okay, thank, thank you, you so for much. No problem, no problem. Thank you for coming Bye, on. You. Absolutely, Britt. You are amazing. All right. So um, I'm about to head out of here, guys. I got a few minutes. Um, Guys, the challenge, it is the last challenge. But yeah, Britt, I advise you get in the university for sure. Guys, my last challenge for 2023 Comment the word challenge in the chat. Um, DM me the word challenge. Whatever you need to do, text me the word challenge. Right? Text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. I'll be giving out those letters on the, um, on the challenge. So for those of you that joined the challenge and you are ultra, I'll be giving you those letters. I got to get out of here right now. So text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. Text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. Text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. All right. Text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. Nine nine three five two three eight. If you're on Instagram, if you are on Instagram, comment the word challenge in the chat. Comment the word challenge in the chat. If you are on YouTube or Facebook, look at the screen right underneath the screen at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. It has been great hanging out with y'all, ladies and gentlemen. I got some stuff that I got to take care of. For those of you that are just joining, go watch the replay of the live. I'm going to make sure the replay is available. It's going to be amazing. Guys, there's so much information I'll be giving y'all. Um, the case law that I was reading, I'm going to be making some letters from it. Right? I'm going to be making letters from this case law. I'll be using a lot of the case laws in here to do 30-day um, um, non-responsive letter, um, no respond letter for both creditor, uh, both for both CRAs. I'll be building out those letters with those case laws, all right? So from your favorite island boy, I'm going to see y'all next time. Later. Don't forget, the last challenge, this is the last challenge for the year you gotta be there the last dispute challenge you gotta be there it's the last dispute letter challenge you will ever need it is happening november 12 no november 13 to 17 it is happening with love 
whether you got good credit or bad credit or you're a credit repair business owner, this challenge is happening. You need to be on there. Get the tickets, take a screenshot, text the word challenge to 917-993-5238. Let's get these negative items deleted. No more late payments, no more inaccurate information, no more avoiding my dispute. You will respond to me. And if you don't respond to me in 30 days, I'm going to give you all the letters on the challenge to have those accounts deleted. So later.